In our next lesson on how enzymes work from chapter 6, we want to review how we classify enzymes by mechanism and how their names are derived. First of all, I'd like to point out that enzymes are often regulated and sometimes by a number of mechanisms, depending on the importance of the reaction which they catalyze. So it's not just a matter of knowing how they work, that is, what is their mechanism of action, but also under what conditions do they work, what regulates when they work, and why is that significant. This will be an ongoing theme in our studies of enzymes. There are six classes of enzymes. You are responsible for knowing the six classes and the types of reactions they catalyze. And so if I gave you a reaction, you should be able to tell me what type of reaction that was and the class of enzyme that catalyzes it. We'll have some practice on this in class. So let's go down the list. Most of them involve the addition or removal of some functional group. In the case of oxidoreductases, as the name implies, they catalyze reactions that involve an oxidation and reduction. Transferases involve the transfer of a functional group. In other words, they're transferring that group from one molecule to another. Hydrolases catalyze hydrolysis reaction. They're breaking a bond by adding water. Lyases also eliminate a group, but they thereby form double bonds. Ligases involve bond formation, and they couple with that ATP hydrolysis. We'll talk about each of these in turn in, in a little bit more detail. Finally, we have isomerases. They also, in a sense, add and remove a functional group. They remove some group from one location on the molecule and attach it in a different location. So it's an isomerization reaction. So let's look at some examples. If you look at the top Right, we have the reaction where pyruvate is decarboxylated to produce acetaldehyde. So you can see the CO2 group in red has been removed, and we have thereby formed a double bond. So this, this fits our classification of a lyase. On the bottom right, we can see that we're removing this amine group from alanine, and that amine group is in blue, and we're transferring that to alpha-ketoglutarate to form glutamate. So this is clearly an example of a transferase. On the bottom left, this is the reaction catalyzed by alcohol dehydrogenase. So we're converting ethyl alcohol into acetaldehyde. Look at the reaction. We're replacing a CH bond with a CO bond. That's an oxidation, and so that would classify as an oxidoreductase. Now let's look at how we name enzymes. The names are often very clumsy, and they seem very complicated, but they're named for a reason. They often are named for the substrate that it acts on or the product it produces. The name most often ends in ASE, but that's not always true. We're going to look in detail at the enzyme chymotrypsin, and clearly that doesn't fall into that category. It was named before a general convention amongst scientists began. So the name tells you often what it does. Let's look at some examples here. And these were some of the examples we looked at in the previous slide. Here's our reaction where we're converting pyruvate to acetaldehyde. And we said it was decarboxylated. So the name of the enzyme is pyruvate decarboxylase because it removes a carboxyl group from pyruvate. Here on the lower right, this is our transferase reaction. It's called alanine aminotransferase because it's transferring an amine group from alanine to alpha-ketoglutarate. So these are two really good examples of how the names reflect the action of the enzyme. One other thing I would point out is that there are often more than one version of the same enzymes. Uh, multiple enzymes that catalyze the same reaction. These are called isozymes. Iso for same. That is, they have the same relative function, but they might operate in different tissues or they might be expressed under different conditions. So perhaps you have one form of the enzyme expressed in the kidneys and a different in the brain. Or perhaps they're expressed depending on pH or temperature. So they have the same function, but sometimes they differ in catalytic properties. And we'll talk more about that when we get to Chapter 7. In our next video lesson, we want to look at how do enzymes enhance the chemical reaction rates to such an amazing degree, and how does that influence the Gibbs free energy of the system?